let's continue. We left off here in lecture 10 last time, and uh, we're going to do the HR diagram. The HR diagram is short for Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, Hertzsprung-Russell, two scientists that conceived of this concept. Uh, it's one of my favorite diagrams in the whole wide world because it, it takes a lot of complex information that we've learned about luminosity of stars, mass of stars, temperature of stars, and then what it does is it puts them into one plot so that we can now visually see what the properties of these stars are. So the HR diagram is a plot of the absolute luminosity of stars. So on the vertical axis, you plot the luminosity of star, luminosity. The only information that the HR diagram does not plot is apparent luminosity. Remember, apparent luminosity depends on how close the star to, is to us, okay? So we don't plot the apparent luminosity, but we plot the absolute luminosity. So absolute luminosity versus temperature. And the one thing they do is the cold stars they put on the right side, the hot stars they put on the left side. Hot then cold. You'll see a pattern like this. When the star is hot, the, it'll be a bright star. And then as the star is cold, the luminosity will decrease. So generally, you'll see this behavior for stars. Okay, This is kind of similar to uh, plots like this we have of uh, humans, you know, their age, their height, their weight, and stuff like that. We plot them, in, and you see those in the doctor's offices. So we're plotting absolute luminosity of stars versus their temperature. We can also pack a lot of other information in there, such as their absolute luminosity on the Hipparchus scale, not, the, not necessarily their absolute luminosity in comparison to the sun, but the Hipparchus scale. So on the right side, we'll go the Hipparchus scale absolute luminosity. On the right side is the absolute luminosity in comparison to sun. In comparison to sun. Absolute luminosity in comparison to sun, Hipparchus scale, absolute luminosity. We can also put their masses. As the stars get heavier, 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 we expect them to get more luminous. So the masses will go on horizontal lines like that. This is mass, OK? And size will go on slanted lines like this. The really super big stars will go over here, super, super, super large. Super, super, super small goes over here, OK? And then somewhere in the middle is the average size stars. So size, mass, their color and spectral type also. Remember, we learned on the slide before this, the spectral type with the O, B, a fine girl, and kiss me, we learned that the O stars are the hot stars. So you're going to have O, and then B, a fine girl, kiss me. The coldest ones are going to go here. And then their color is the BB color index. We learned that the cold stars are get an uh, index of two, red. Orange is one, yellow, green, blue, violet. So we can put the color code on the top if we want. So these are the red stars. So plus two, plus one, plus 0.6, zero, negative 0.2, negative 0.4. These are the red stars. And then as you go this way, you go through the Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, violet, like that. OK, so lots of information. I'm going to show you a couple different versions of what this will look like when you are done plotting it. So you can see cold stars here, 3,000 Kelvin. And then on the hotter side, 30,000. You see here the luminosity in comparison to the sun, you see. One means luminosity of sun. 0.1, one tenth the luminosity of sun. 100, 1,000, 10. 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million. OK, that's about the brightest ones that are available. So bright. And then the sizes are on the uh, slanted lines. Any star that's on, on this line, 100th the size of the sun. 
Any star that's on that line, one-tenth the size of the sun. Any star that's on that line, the same size as the sun, okay? Ten times the size of the sun, hundred times the size of the sun, thousand times the size of the sun, okay? So, of course, where should the sun lie? Okay, the sun should lie right on that slanted line, right? Which, because it's its, its own size, right? So the sun lies right there. Uh, and then... If we draw a straight line from the one, you see, one, one luminosity of sun, draw a straight line, the sun should go right there. So the sun should go in the intersection of one and one. One size, one mass. Okay, one, and then you go one. And then if we go down, the temperature of the sun should be 5,800. 5,800, okay? And that's pretty much where the sun lies, you see? There's other versions of this too. I'm going to show you a couple other ones. Let me show you on the slide here. This is another version. See, cold stars. Now they also put the, oh, be a fine girl and kiss me. You see, as you go this way, you got colder ones, M. And then you got the luminosity again. Now, Look at this, absolute luminosity. This time, instead of putting the luminosity in comparison to the sun, they put the luminosity on the Hipparchus scale. Remember the sun, uh, the sun, is, is this one looks like, the sun should get a 4.83 on the Hipparchus scale. So almost a five. And then as you go down, plus 10 means 100 times dimmer. Plus 15 means 100 times dimmer than that. Zero means 100 times brighter. Negative five, you see here, negative five means 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So as you're going this way, you get more negative, you go more positive, you see? And then when you plot, when they plot them, these are the red dwarfs, you see? Then you got the yellow and then the white. This is the green-white region, but it looks white to us uh, in, when we look at it. And then you got blue. And then we see there are some stars over here. Those are dying stars. Okay, giants and supergiants. If we find that a star is in this region of the HR diagram, that means it is evolving and it is in the process of dying. Okay, if we find stars that are here on the HR diagram, that is a dead star, white dwarf star. It's already died. You see. So here, that this is another version. You can kind of see a pattern, you know, similar cold stars, hot stars. This one, 1 1.01.001, .001, you see? And then this one again, red. Then as you go this way, it goes orange, yellow. See, when you go over here, it's orange, then yellow. Then, you see how it looks green? But it's kind of green whitish, like there. And then you get blue, blue, and then this is a dying star. Uh, giant, supergiant, and white dwarf. These are all white dwarfs. They kind of go on that slanted line. You see this slanted line right here. So let's see, we're anything else. This is another version. This one, they just, they chose not to show the colors as much, but they're just showing the, uh, the diagonal lines, and then they're plotting the stars. And then they're just showing you by the white region, they're showing you the main categories. This will be called main sequence stars. And we're gonna learn about that in the next uh, couple uh, slides. If a star is here, it's known as a main sequence star. That means it hasn't started dying yet, okay? If a star is here, it's a giant. If a star is here, super giant. And then star here, white dwarf. And then finally, another version This most closely resembles, this version most closely resembles what your assignment will look like when you're done with it. The HR diagram assignment that you will do and it will be due in two weeks, it will look like this. I will ask you to plot uh, 20 stars on the HR diagram, plot them, put their names next to them, and then afterwards color it, okay? And uh, I'd rather you color the whole thing so that the background looks nice, all colored, you know. So that means any star in this region looks red. 
and then the yellow, uh, I mean orange, yellow, green, and then blue. You see? Same thing, you got the luminosities here, 100, 10,000 million, 1 10,000th, 100, 1 10,000th. You got the spectral type, oh, be a fine girl and kiss me. You got the temperatures, hot stars, cold stars. And then you got the color index too, which is good. They added that, you see? Red star is a 2, 1.4, 0.8. Yellow is a 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0, negative 0.4 is the violets, you see? So, and then they got the Hipparchus scale here too, absolute luminosity, 5. So you see the sun should get a, almost a 5, should go 1, then should go down, become a G2 star, 5,800 Kelvin, so it should be all on the, on the right category. The only one that this doesn't show is the sizes, the diagonal lines, okay? So um, the different versions I showed you, they don't all have all the information there. So this one doesn't have the sizes, and then some of the other ones were missing some other information. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go on, talk a little bit more, explain about the HR diagram, and then we'll go back and then I'll show you how to do the, some of the plotting, okay, for the assignment.